City Emergency Room physician. Uh, Dr. Billy, good morning to you, sir. How are you feeling today? Oh, I'm feeling great. How are you guys doing? I think we're doing okay. We're yes, all right. we are. We've kind of gone through the highs and lows of the last two hours. We're coming out mm-hmm. swinging, nevertheless. Yeah, well, you got to keep it going somehow. Yeah. We're trying. We're trying. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Billy, let's talk about, uh, first and foremost, the fact that you are a New York Times bestselling author and a doctor, too. So when does a doctor find the free time to write books that become New York Times bestsellers as well? Well, the books were, were, were years ago. It was in 2005, 2006. I got, I'm trying to work on a new one, but... You know, there's time for everything, as you know. You just gotta you gotta figure out a way to balance it all. Gotta prioritize, right? You, you're also a yeah. a radio host as well, so you do this gig as well. You do uh, where where do you do that? Yeah, so once a week for two hours uh, on Sirius XM channel 110 is Doctor Radio, and I host the ER show, and I've been doing that for 15 years, so. I'm trying to, to, to stomp on your turf a little bit also. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. I've got a very good friend who's an emergency room physician as well. And uh, you guys uh, are amazing because you're working under incredible pressure with uh, a lot of folks coming at you from different angles. And I admire your ability to be able to divide and conquer the way you folks do it in an emergency room with a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, I mean, every day is different and it can be chaotic at times. We try and control that chaos. But I, I love it. I've been doing it for 30 years. Um, I'm not so sure I want to be doing it that much longer, but I'm still I'm still uh, still pushing. Well, you look pretty young, so that's pretty good for yeah. 30 years, man. Clean living is a testament to that, and I know that's part of what we're talking about here with uh, natural ingredients in first aid care and whether or not they are effective. And there's, there's an increased uh, demand for these things now. Can you tell me about what, what that's uh, what that means? What clean label ingredients and such? Yeah, I mean it's really not magic or anything. Clean label is just like it sounds. It's When people read labels, they want to see words and names that they recognize. You don't want to see complicated chemicals. You, won't, you don't want to see dyes with a bunch of numbers after it. You want to recognize products that you can pronounce. They're natural, minimally processed, no preservatives. So kind of stuff that you might even have in your refrigerator or in your medicine cabinet at home. Uh, the stuff that grandma's been using for years. Yeah, my grandmother used to, she was from Sicily, off the boat from Sicily when she was 24, when we would get chest congestion and whatever, she'd make something that she called a mustard plaster. (laughs) Didn't smell good, but she put it on your chest, and a couple hours later, you were breathing a lot better. (laughs) To this day, I don't know what was in that. Yeah, I mean, I have so many patients who come in and they drink their chamomile tea, or and they they have traditions of using it, or honey for cough, which is actually studied in research. So there's a lot of this stuff is based in science. You know, Curad, which created this brand of uh, products for first aid, Curad Naturals, you know, they've been making bandages since 1951, but they reach for products like baking soda. So they have a product that's infused with Arm & Hammer baking soda and a product that's in, uh, infused with aloe. You know, aloe has been studied as a, as a medicinal plant for, for ages. So there's, there's actually some research behind uh, what Grandma used to do. Well, and I think there's no question, Dr. Goldberg, I mean, uh, like you said, looking at labels, especially food, I think there was a story in the New York Times on Monday about just about lunch meat, processed lunch meat. I don't know if you saw that, but, you know, um, you know, parents in a hurry trying to get their kid off to school, making a lunch if they're not doing school lunch and you know, you slap a little piece of turkey and think, oh, yeah, this is great. And then you look at what's on the the back of the of the Hillshire Farms um, uh, container and all the stuff that's in processed foods. And, you know, let's face it, we Americans eat a lot of processed food. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's everywhere. Listen, I'm a father of three. And guilty as charged. My my son has an obsession with these pretzel dogs. But, you know, processed meats we know are not great for you. So I'm not unrealistic. You, you just want to try to, you know, minimize what you, 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 you take in that's bad and maximize what you take in that's good. And Everything that's in moderation. Like yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not unrealistic. I, I, you, you can't be perfect on these things. 
Uh, Dr. Billy, I, looking at your resume, and Rob mentioned your uh, New York Times bestseller. You've had a couple of books on the New York Times bestseller list. You've appeared on Good Morning America, The Day Show. Uh, you've also a painter, a very accomplished painter, uh, who uh, has collections in Madrid, Sydney, New York, San Francisco. All of these have one thing in common, and the same thing in common with what you're talking about today, and that is communication, communication with the, with the public. Uh, so I, the theme of, I'm hearing that we need to do a better job of the labels on the medicines of communicating with the public. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's what I learned. But by doing the radio and doing these books, I learned a lot about medicine. I learned how to talk to people. I learned how to, you know, people want to know what they're putting in their body, whether it's a medication or whether you're getting a procedure. They want to know exactly what it is. You, you, we use a fancy language in the hospital that people don't understand. We use, need to use simple words. You know, Cured just wants to put on simple things onto a product that's reliable. They've been making bandages since 1951. If they can put some baking soda on it that, you know, soothes, reduces odor, some aloe, which is lubricating and soothing and has some anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties, they want to do that. But they're not going to claim that it's going to, you know, cure cancer or anything. It's, you know, the, we, there's too much out there that makes ridiculous claims. We just need to kind of take it back a level and uh, and, 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 and simplify things. You mentioned think, yeah. aloe and baking soda. What are some other natural first aid ingredients you can use in the home for injuries, wounds, what have you? Well, you know, honey is something that uh, people have used for, for wounds and for cough. There's uh, hydrogen peroxide, which... Again, it sounds chemical, but it's hydrogen and oxygen. Um, we use that to clean ears in the hospital. Uh, we use it to clean wounds also, Epsom salts. There's a lot of things that people use. You know, we mentioned chamomile tea that people use. There's a lot of little things like that. Again, you have a serious burn, a serious wound, you come see me in the ER. But for the little things around uh, the, the house, you know, I think there's a lot of natural products that people can reach for um, that can help them uh, be healthier. Prevention, though, is the most important thing. Try not to hurt yourself in the first place. Try not to get that sunburn. Try not to get that cut. You know, simple things are very important. Yeah, as it's going back to communication, I come from a world at one time uh, with climate change, a very technical world, and when we wanted to go to the Hill to uh, to brief the senators and the uh, congressmen, we did not look for the most intelligent or the smartest guy on the street. We looked for the guy that could communicate in very simple, in this case, drawing cartoons. Uh, you're not suggesting cartoons, but this, the same thing is there. Speaking in such a way that people can understand without struggling. Yeah, I don't want to throw out all these fancy medical words to make myself yeah. seem smart. I want people to understand what they're they're getting because I if I if I am saying a bunch of stuff, even if it's right, if somebody doesn't understand it, they don't get anywhere. So I think that's kind of what Curette is trying to do with their product: kind of simple messaging, simple products, reliable brand. You can check it all out at Curette.com. There's a lot of information there, and you can see these new line of products, Curette Naturals. I, you know. I don't do this often, but I, I kind of believe in these products, so I think uh, people should check them out. I have cured Band-Aids in my bathroom even as we speak, Doc. Thanks so much for your time this morning. I know you've got a bunch of these to do today, so I appreciate you spending some time with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here.